The hour being 7 p.m., I'm about to call the Cranston City Council meeting to order. If everyone could take their seats. Troop 66, who has obtained the rank of Eagle Scout, and I personally know how hard he worked on not only going through all of the ranks before you can even start your Eagle project, but how hard he worked on his Eagle project itself. He retired U.S. flags, uh, state flags, city flags, POW flags. He collected 1,496 flags, if, if my memory serves me, and we had a retirement, we had a retirement ceremony at Camp Champlain. It was well attended, and he was a great leader and had all of the scouts there, so we'd like to honor Nicholas on obtaining his rank of Eagle. Would you like to come up here? You stand right, you stand right. Come on up. I'm just going to read the citation out loud. State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations of Cranston City Council, be it known to all that the Cranston City Council hereby issues a citation to Nicholas J. Bombardier of Troop 66 Garden City on his achievement in making the rank of Eagle Scout. The entire council extends its sincerest congratulations and very best wishes on this memorable event and expresses its hope and continued good health and good fortune in all future endeavors. That being said, mm -hmm. Association Honduranda de Rhode Island for his outstanding individual achievement in interscholastic and amateur athletics with the Honduranian dad in Rhode Island. 
recognition of merit. Resolve that war is Honolulu dead celebrates the achievements and contributions of Honduran Americans to Rhode Island and the United States and highlights the values of our community while highlighting the rich heritage, history, and tradition of Honduras while raising awareness of the Honduran American immigrant community. Whereas Giovanni Canales was selected to the 2016 Province Journal All-State Boys Soccer Division III First Team. Whereas the Cranston School Committee formally congratulated and recognized Giovanni Canales for his outstanding accomplishments and for his exemplary leadership in the schools and community. Whereas Giovanni Canales became the first player in history to reach the reviving baseball in inner cities World Series three consecutive times during the 2015, 2016, and 2017 seasons. Giovanni Canales playing with the Boys and Girls Club of Rhode Island, U14 All Star team at age 13, regional champion champions player at the RBI World Series 2015 in Texas. Whereas Giovanni Canales became the first player <coughs> was a Excuse me, whereas Giovanni Canales was a player at the RBI World Series in Cincinnati in 2015, member of the Pawtucket RBI Junior Division All Star Baseball Team, Major League Baseball's RBI, and in it is in, in inner cities, Northeast Regional Tournament, World Series in Texas, whereas Giovanni Canales went 3 for 4 at the RBI World Series 2017 versus Florida, representing the Boys and Girls Club of Pawtucket. Whereas Giovanni Canales was named 2016 Province Journal All-State Boys Soccer Division III First Team and recognized by the Cranston City Council for his outstanding individual achievement in interscholastic athletics and is named a member of the 2017 Province Journal All-State Baseball Team Division I Central Second Team from Cranston High School East Boats. Whereas Giovanni Canales is the goal and junior co-captain for the 2017 Rhode Island Interscholastic League Division III State Champions Cranston High School East Boys, Boys Soccer Team. <coughs> Giovanni Canales helped the Division III State Champions Cranston High School East Boys, Boats Boys Soccer Team with nine saves beats the St. Raphael 1-0, and he has another solid year in net. In 30 games started for the boats, Can Canales has recorded 237 saves and posted nine shutouts for 15 career wins. Be it resolved with the Cranston City Council would like to recognize this outstanding athlete for his contribution to his teams and to the sports of baseball and soccer. And Giovanni Canales will receive a copy of this resolution signed by the members of the Cranston City Council, dated this 27th day of November 2017 in Cranston, Rhode Island, signed by all the council members. So Giovanni, if you want to come up on the side of the wall. tonight um, for hearing. The council cannot debate those um, under the open meetings laws, nor can the administration answer any questions about it. 
So th there may be some, uh, you know, comments about things that are just being introduced or, or are not here for debate. And because we cannot uh, comment on those, uh, I'd like to let everyone come in and speak early. Uh, but I'd like to limit it to two minutes apiece, just so that we're not here all night, especially on undocumented items that we can't even debate. So I'd offer that as a motion. So I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I have a second. I have a motion to approve. I have a motion to make public comment one session this evening to commence in early in the evening for docketed and undocketed resolutions, knowing that uh, anything that was brought up on undocketed matters in the first section could not be discussed by the council or the administration uh, because it would violate open means law and to limit speaking to two minutes. Under discussion, Councilman Stankos. Yeah, um, I'd like to uh, ask the uh, council solicitor if a motion like that can uh, change our rules, which call for four minutes speaking. Are you suspending the rules? I think in general for docketed items, we've allowed four minutes in the past, but for on docker items, it appears uh, there's no real hard and fast four minute rule, so I guess the motion would be to amend that four minute time to allow uh, for two minutes. Um, well, I guess I would uh, ask uh, Councilman Favicchio to amend his proposal to uh, two minutes for undocketed items and uh, four minutes or docketed item. That's fair. That's fine, uh, Councilman. Uh, that's basically what the intent is because obviously the op other options, we don't really have to, I mean, we'd be uh, going all night on undocketed items, so I'd rather spend the time on the docketed items. So that's fine. I'll amend my motion to suspend the rules to allow uh, the public comment in both for docketed and undocketed items. Um, the limit would be two minutes for undocketed items and four minutes for docketed items. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, the clerk, please take the vote. Yes. 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 Start the list, and then we'll take speakers who are here, maybe not on the list. Uh, question Bingo 27 Perennial Drive. And she is speaking in Ordinance 9 17 03, a docketed matter. Is that working? She pushed the, she pushed the button. <laughs> well, that wouldn't. Well, that would. Then you should. Can't we plug it in? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, President Farina and City Council members. Residents within the Garden City neighborhood support the progress and development in the surrounding areas, understanding that this is needed for the long term prosperity of the city. However, we cannot put development ahead of quality of life for residents and traffic safety for all citizens. Tonight, you're considering passing an ordinance for the rezoning of areas of Chapel View, Plat 14, Lot 1 and 22 to C5 heavy industry with conditions. In Section 2 of this ordinance, the overview states that the sites are already developed. Lot 1 is developed, but Lot 22 isn't. There's more to this than simply changing the designated designation to already constructed areas. I'm again asking you to pause on passing this ordinance until there's a detailed review of all conditions allowed in the rezoning. We need to be proactive to ensure development at Chapel View doesn't create a negative impact on the quality of life for residents and the environment. To date, there's been little to no discussion addressing these two very important points. There are several specific points of, of this ordinance that call for a second look prior to passing the zoning change. Retail large scale. This area is not large enough to safely accommodate the traffic for a big box retailer and is not in keeping with the quality of retailers in the area. 
we were told in late July that there would be no big box stores. Secondly, full service fuel stations. At the plan meeting earlier this month, the commission questioned the reason for this condition as there were environmental concerns. Mr. Coates explained that the Tesla may be a tenant for future development and electric charging stations may be needed. Since electric vehicle charging station is in a loud condition, there's no need for a full service fuel station to be allowed in this ordinance, especially without reference to or discussion of environmental impact. Also needing a second look at arts and crafts manufacturing, as manufacturing of any kind belongs in an industrial area, not in a residential retail area. Check cashing, nightclubs, and commercial recreation. None of these are in keeping with the quality that currently exists at Chapel View and surrounding areas. Why no one is questioning the Carpionato Group on their, on their specific intentions for the development of this land. Traffic continues to be a major concern that hasn't been addressed with a specific plan. The condition within the ordinance only states that a certificate of occupancy won't be issued until traffic improvements are completed. We have serious concerns that development will be completed prior to traffic improvements. And being realistic, we all know that if a building is built and a tenant is at the ready, it's very likely that there will be an exception granted for the certificate of occupancy regardless of the status of traffic improvements. There needs to be more specific language in the ordinance stating that any development cannot commence unless and until an approved traffic improvement plan is in place with a specific timeline. There are too many questions and not enough answers. We respectfully ask the City Council to postpone voting until there's a detailed review of the ordinance, amendments are made to the allowed conditions, there's clarification on use of this land with an environmental understanding and consideration to the quality of life for the residents, and that the ordinance includes specific timelines for traffic improvements before any further development commences. Thank you. Thank you, Gresham. Pauline DeRosa, 98 Cypress Drive, Ordinance 9-17-03. Good evening, President Farina. City Council members, I'd like to address the ordinance number 917-03, Chapel View Boulevard, Plat 14, Lot 22, in the amended zone change from S1 open space to C5 heavy business and industry. Lot 22 is located behind Shores Market, west of Power Road. Lot 22 will be the location for a proposed big box retailer. Although not specifically stated by the developer, it is likely to be a Costco wholesale warehouse in only of two intersections in phase two to Costco West driveway and Costco East driveway seem to confirm that statement. In addition, these driveways, as they are called, will intersect with Saginaw's Crossroad. Will these changes require additional traffic signals how will they affect traffic flow? And exactly where on Sacanas would they be located? There needs to be explicit answers to these questions and concerns. In addition, Mass Costco is located 50 miles north in Avon, Massachusetts. A proposed business of this tenor in Chapel View will attract shoppers from all corners of southern New England and compound our tr current traffic challenges. A portion of this expansion will include a parking garage and fueling station. This type of industrial development is not in keeping with the original plans that were submitted in 2008 for the first phase of Chapel View. The zone change to C5 heavy business is not conducive to the current look or feel of Chapel View or the fountains at Chapel View and will only compound traffic circulation. The rush to develop open space in Chapel View is very troubling and we must be cognizant of the effects these types of businesses have on our communities with regard to traffic safety and environmental issues. We do not want to see the inclusion of a Costco wholesale warehouse in the Chapel View development. 
We ask that ordinance number 9-17-03 be further amended by removing two entries from the ranger's chart on page four under the business heading. There would be fuel station full service and retail sale large scale, both of which are not appropriate for this development. How would the City Council render a final vote to this zoning change without having, at the very least, a preliminary plan from Mr. Coates and the Copinato Group showing what their intentions are for controlling the traffic flow on the Sacramento Corridor, Pontiac Avenue, Route 37, and the London Avenue? We need to see details and plans for traffic mitigation prior to any further large-scale expansion. Mr. Coates has said he has been in discussions with Rhode Island DOT to address traffic concerns. Have these discussions been productive in a way that would address the specific needs of the abutting communities? Safety issues in our communities need to be of paramount concern. Thank you. Robert Centurion Jr., 30 Eaton Road. Ordinance 9, 17 Good evening, Council Members and Council President Freedom. Thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I'm here to speak about the ordinance concerning the Chapel View area uh, on tonight's docket. My first question uh, before I start speaking is, is I heard it mentioned earlier and I realized I haven't heard about it in the last month, is there an update about the traffic study that is supposed to be taking place at Socknots Crossroad in that area that was passed by the council three months ago? I'm just curious because that will determine what I say next, so. To the administration? <coughs> or, can you remember? I can answer it if you want, Council President. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Santori, the, uh, I don't know if you were here last meeting, but um, we had arranged a meeting for November 30th, which the group was not said they could not attend. So we left it up to Mr. Coates and the Garden City Group. Um, the, Mr. Coates is available. He's willing to present that. Um, I've been briefed, um, but that's not, it's outside of my control right now. So if they, whenever they get together, they'll have a presentation. Okay, well, I just, I say that because as we hit the holiday season, as anyone here is aware who's driving around, the area that we're discussing this evening has obviously seen a lot more traffic flow in the last couple of weeks. And it's gonna probably really see more so as we get into more in the holiday season. And my biggest concern on this is still remains safety. I remember I first started coming to these meetings back in February because of the Garden City issue. And, we were in, and at that meeting, you pass an ordinance or whatever, and then a couple months later, we come back and we say, we agree that the area is, has a lot of danger going on in terms of traffic, so we pass an ordinance to have a traffic study. And now we're having another vote tonight, and I have to agree with what was said before, in that there needs to be a, a solid plan in place. I understand that, you know, urban planning is not glamorous, it's not sexy, but it's one of the most important things that this council does. And I think that in terms of having something concrete in place would be good, especially since you know we're getting to a point now where we're seeing God City go into another phase soon because that building's going to be done. Chapel View's going to go to another thing, and by the time uh, uh, you know these things are done at this point, we're looking at we're going to have another traffic study because it's going to radically change. You know, you kind of see both. Chapel View and Garden City keep growing, 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 and that's great to a point, but after a certain while, it's going to be more space over there, and it's going to be overdeveloped, and I don't know if we're reaching that point now, you know, this could still land over there, but I think that a lot of residents could, would, would argue that it is becoming overdeveloped, so I just like to voice my support for the residents before me who said their concerns, and hope to see this uh, body do something about that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Point of order. Just to clarify, I see person point of order. You may. Uh, during public hearings, the speaker would make, can make statements, but I don't believe they can pose questions to the city council. They can pose a general question for us to get back with them answer later on, but uh, they can't, you know, 
it's, it was out of order, I, I held back, but for the future, they can't pose questions for us to answer during public hearing. You know, Councilman Arquette, that happened once before, and I do remember Councilman Sykos telling me that we were allowed to answer questions, and we actually had the lawyers go around and ask, and the lawyers said during public comment that we could, so um, I'm trying just to make sure I do what everybody says right. We don't have to answer, but we can. There's no law that says we don't have to. And just another point of information, the matter before us tonight before Chapel View is the rezoning of the currently developed area above, um, basically, Chapel Restaurant, Shaw's, and that area above, not the zoning of the area below, um, just to clarify. Thanks, Sakosha. Name, address, for the, and you're talking about an undocumented item? Yes, if thanks to Coach President of the Second Amendment Coalition, I live in Johnston, Rhode Island, and I'm speaking on the introduction for the resolution for the No Guns in School. Um, you, should, you should not support this bill, the resolution whatsoever. Do you know it's currently already a felony in Rhode Island to carry a firearm on school grounds without, being without having a license? This exemption was put on the law in 1990 by our Attorney General stating that in the event that there was a need for added security in our school systems, we already have it in the place in the law that these people could be licensed and go on our school grounds. Since 1990, you know how many problems we had with this, with this exemption? Zero. Not one. Not one single CCW holder has gone onto any school grounds and done anything wrong. So we have 27 years of not a problem. So now we want to put forth the resolution to do this. How many people will be affected by this? There are approximately 3,500 CCW holders in the state of Rhode Island. We have a population of 1.1 million people. Do the math. Four tenths of, less than four tenths of 1% of the population are legally licensed to carry a firearm. These aren't criminals. This particular resolution is not aimed at making our schools safer going after criminals. It's going after the licensed CCW holders, which for the last 27 years have not been your problem. Okay, the effect on this bill was put forward to the speaker, the speaker of the, not speaker, I apologize, to the sponsor of this resolution last year at the House, at the House res, uh, hearings on this. It was preferred that a retired police chief with even 30 years of experience would no longer be able to carry a firearm for his own personal protection if this resolution was to go forward. The sponsor of this bill amazingly said, it would be better off for everyone if the retired police chief left his firearm in the car and then went into the school. That would be safer for everyone. That is what this bill does. This bill does not go after law-abiding criminals. It only goes after law-abiding citizens. These types of resolutions have popped up after Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook was only a gun-free zone. This type of failed resolution was one of the reasons Adam Lancer was able to go in and do what he did at Sandy Hook. After that point, Sandy Hook and most of the school districts in Connecticut upped their security, added on security. We're putting, trying to put forward a resolution, or putting forward one, to put gun-free zones in Cranston. Amazingly. The same gun free zones that failed in Sandy Hook. If you look at the FBI reports, every single mass shooting in the United States, with the exception of two, was done in a gun free zone. Now you want to put it in our K through 12 classrooms and schools in Cranston? There is no added security in this resolution, none whatsoever. So I think it's a huge mistake. In fact, our legislature two years ago passed resolution, passed a law to arm our campus police so in the event that there's a problem, our campus police and our colleges and, and universities can actually respond to an active shooter quickly. All this resolution does is guarantee that if we had an active shooter in a school, absolutely guarantees that no ex-military, no ex-police officer, no ex-police chief will be able to respond because it would be illegal for them to carry a firearm on school grounds even if they're licensed. This is why this resolution, I mean this bill, has failed for the last three years at the State House and hasn't got out of one committee because it doesn't work. It makes things worse for security in schools, not better. Okay? What message are we sending to our K 
through 12 students. You're on your own, but when you get to college, we'll make sure that the armed police officers there respond. This is a terrible bill. You should not introduce this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mike O'Neill. Good evening. My name is Mike O'Neill from the Rock Rhode Island. I'm the Vice President of Rhode Island Second Amendment Coalition. Uh, gun free zones, uh, Frank Scotia covered a little bit of it. Um, I'd like to uh, describe a video that was on Facebook. This can describe a gun free zone as uh, best as possible that I've seen. <clears throat> if everyone remembers Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day was Bill uh, Murray. So every day the day would repeat and he would relive the day. So this gentleman was uh, running through town. And you could tell it was a sense of urgency. He uh, goes into this building and finds his loved one uh, deceased on the ground. So he took a five by eight sheet and put a firearm with a red circle and a line through it, put it on the outside of the building. Repeats the day, running through town, urgency, gets the uh, inside to the building again, and his loved one's still deceased. Puts two larger signs on the outside of the building. Again, he lives the day, running through town in an in urgent manner, gets inside, his loved one's still passed. Four by eight sheets with the same signs. Runs through, and again, his loved one's deceased. My point is, gun-free zones, just because you need a gun-free zone, does not do anything. It doesn't add protection. There's no uh, study that says that it adds protection. If you look at the Orlando shooting, it was a gun-free uh, nightclub. An officer was outside. He engaged with the shooter. The shooter went back into the club. 45 minutes it took the police department to get SWAT to go in. Meanwhile, there was more lives lost. Imagine if there was a couple of people or one person inside the nightclub that was a carry concealed permit holder. The state of Rhode Island and the school departments cannot afford to add metal detectors, uh, police officers at a, a large amount of rate to what we have now. They don't, they don't have that kind of funds. The state of Rhode Island doesn't have that kind of funds. So we're not, the people pressing for this resolution are not giving any type of resolution as far as how they're going to actually accomplish it. Just make everything a gun free zone. Johnny Fogel legislation pat themselves on the back. So I guess I'm out of time, Mr. President. You're all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That concludes my sign-up sheet. I assume there will be more people who want to speak. So again, uh, would you guys come up one at a time? If you can, try to keep it under two minutes if it's on an undocumented item, docketed four. Uh, but if you're going to repeat something someone's already said, I'm more than happy to have you say I agree with everything uh, some previously stated about the topic and add some color to it. That way we can try to get everybody a chance to speak who wants to. Good evening, Suzanne. Susanna Arena, 88 Lake Mambo, Cranston, Rhode Island. Um, first of all, this is not a bill. This is a resolution. And it clearly is not going to stop a madman from going into the school and in the grounds. Um, I could use a metaphor that I had had um, Senator Gallo put in legislation for the child safe zone. It was to keep pedophiles out of um, libraries, uh, school zones, we know that it's not going to keep them out. Um, what it basically is, is it adds time to sentencing for people like this when they are in such a zone. I, as a parent, don't feel comfortable having someone, I've said this before, going into school other than police personnel. They are allowed, under the laws that are passed in 40, I think it's 43 other states, that have already passed this legislation. So it's not like we have to reinvent the wheel. There's good legislation that's out there. We don't have to design our own. So if we follow that, and I do like guns. I like to shoot. I don't want my rights taken away. However, this is about on school grounds. That's all this is about. So I don't really understand what Mr. Scotia, Sco 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 sorry, um, um, pronunciation, um, what the complaint is, why you need to have it here. But I also wanted to bring up that this bill, this um, resolution was before us um, back in November, and then it was going to the Ordinance Committee, which it never made it, and there were reasons for it, I'm sure. And we're back here again. I need to know why we are not 
approving something like this. First of all, I don't understand why it went to the Ordinance Committee. A lot of people have asked about that, and then it was never heard, and now we're back here again. So I would like to hear my council being supportive of our school committee and say we know that we need legislation to go to the State House and have them devise some sort of bill that protects the state. You are only putting your yes vote on something that is going to protect people. We're not, you're not putting together a bill here in Cranston. We're just going forward. Isn't that correct? Well, you can't answer right now if you don't want to. Um, so that's what I'm asking for, is that you, the council, put a yes to this because I think it's an important bill. I also wanted to just support um, Councilman Arcado, who had the um, resolution for banning the bump stocks and the trigger cranks. I think that's excellent, and I think that's kind of a no-brainer. So thank you for your time. Anyone else like to speak? So uh, it's time to come to the point. If you're ready, come on up. Thank you. Name and address the record, please. Uh, Stephen Walker, 317 Bloodman Road, and Thanks. Good evening, Stephen. Uh, I'm here to speak against passing any resolution uh, condoning this uh, this particular bill. Um, as was stated before, it does absolutely nothing <coughs> to prevent someone with ill will from entering school grounds to begin with. Um, and uh, honestly, all, all it does is one more one more thing to chip away at uh, at the rights of gun owners. Um, that's all. I just came here to uh, offer my disapproval for the bill, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, council members, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Lisa Pagano from Carlisle Street in Garden City. I'm here again this year to speak on behalf of the No Guns in School resolution that closes the loophole for concealed carry permit holders to bring guns to school buildings and on the grounds where school sports and other events are held. Many believe that a good guy with a gun can take down a bad guy with a gun. That's, that's the ongoing statement and belief. This is why many attempts to close this loophole has failed here. Our Cranston School Committee has voted three years in a row in support of this ban. Our teachers support it. Our police even support it. And I bet if you poll the parents on this, they would be in support as well, if they understood the, the nature of the loophole. Experience has shown us over the past several years that the good guy with the gun cannot stop a deranged killer until after the damage is already done. And yes, we know that most school shooters have had mental health issues and should never have had a weapon in the first place. But we also know that it's still pretty easy for someone to secure and maintain ownership of a weapon these days despite their history of violence, troubled mental health, and background checks. The mass shootings occurred, occurring almost weekly now show us that. You will all recall my brother Jimmy was murdered almost 10 years ago by a deranged guy who was granted an automatic concealed carry permit as he after he retired from the police department. A guy who was, and I say that not to exploit my brother's murder or my brother, but to, to illustrate that what is possible in our small community that we also love. Um, the guy was employed by the Providence Police Department to improve quality of life, resolve problems, preserve the peace, protect human rights, and apprehend criminals consistent with the law. Clearly this guy was not upholding his responsibilities as a cop on the day he fired three shots at my brother in the middle of a cul-de-sac where many little children were playing ball. Clearly he suffered, suffered mental instability. Or maybe he was just evil. Either way, he had a permit and an arsenal of weapons and ammo that he couldn't wait to use as soon as he got a little frustrated. So in some cases, even the good guys with the guns can suffer mental illness. Despite using my brother to gun violence, I'm a Second Amendment supporter. I believe in the Second Amendment. But I'm not naive. I know there are many loose cannons out there with access to guns and the willingness to use them in any environment. I also know that we're not going to solve our mental health crisis overnight. That will take some time. So why not take control over what we can do now to ensure our kids' safety? Why not remove the guns from the equation where kids learn, play, socialize, gain confidence, and build character? It would be easy to throw up our hands and say, okay, to the status quo. But, but do we really want to create a Wild West environment at school or on a ball field or at a dance? My son's a freshman in high school here. I send him off to school knowing what I know to be possible, having seen it firsthand. I pray every day he will be safe at school. I would feel much safer knowing that he is in a gun-free zone at school and events. 
We should leave the safety of our students to the capable security and resource officers trained to react appropriately in a dangerous shooter situation. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Nadders, the record. Jessica Rosner, 107 Betsy Williams Drive in Cranston, Rhode Island. Good evening. Um, I'd like this to at least get to a vote, however you decide to vote. Um, this has been going on year after year after year. I've lived in the city for 31 years, and this particular resolution in many forms has come up. And you need to be on the record at this point. I've seen council members come and go and come and go, and it's time to take a stand one way or the other. That's one thing. I work in the public library at the William Hall Library where you can also bring a loaded gun on our grounds. I can tell you I've been here every, for a long time, 12, 13 years. There is a security guard who does not have a gun. We have no possible defense. We are in an open room. There is one room with a door and two bathrooms. If somebody were to come in, there would be, there's little children and senior citizens, basically, and the people that work there. And anything could happen, and I do not feel safe. I support a no guns in schools resolution, and I support this, a gun-free zone. I think it's ridiculous, scenario after scenario, everybody has this hypothetical idea that they could be the hero, that there's some good guy with a gun that's just gonna happen to be there, that's just going to happen to be a trained shooter, that's just going to happen to be at the right place at the right time and defend the innocent people who are harmed and traumatized and sometimes killed. And that is very unlikely because it's even when there is a good guy with a gun, often they are so good and so responsible that they're afraid of shooting an innocent bystander, which is a reasonable thing to think. So please, at the very least, do your job, discuss this amongst yourselves, and take a vote and be on the record. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ramsey Davis. I live at 58 Fordson Avenue in Cranston. I've lived there with my wife since the mid-1980s. My son, his wife, and our only grandchild live in the Edgewood section, and my grandchild will be going to road school in next September. And that's the reason I'm here for my grandchild. I'm wearing this today because I'm a retired United States Marine Corps veteran of the Vietnam War. And I want to make that point because I carried an M16 and I carried a, fire, a, 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 a handgun for a year in Vietnam. I know the capability of those weapons. I've been trained extensively in those weapons. After leaving the service, I went to college and got a degree in education. and. Have, uh, had a program for emotionally disturbed, behaviorally disordered students at the junior high level. Now we all know junior high can be a difficult age group. I happen to have one student that was particularly difficult, and nobody was making any progress, including myself. And uh, his guidance counselor called the two of us into his office one day and closed the door and proceeded to pull a handgun out of his desk drawer and wave it around in a dangerous, threatening manner to this student, trying to make a point, I guess the point was, that power pays. I, of course, uh, with my background, was wondering if I was going to be alive in the next five minutes. What that student learned was that the power of a handgun pays. You have a handgun, you have power. What the rest of the school learned was that we had a guidance counselor with a handgun in his desk drawer. That guidance counselor had a concealed carry permit. That is not the lesson we want to teach our children in our schools. I assume most of you know that the Cranston School Department has a nationally recognized program 
called ALICE. ALICE stands for ALERT, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. This program is taught by the Cranston Police Department. They have been trained in, in, in teaching this program to our school staff, our school students, our school faculty. All members of the school department undergo this training, this ALICE training. You can look it up online. There's extensive information about that training. We have school resource officers in our schools. They're armed and they're trained. We have the Cranston Police Department that is highly trained in dealing with situations having to do with firearms in schools. We don't need a third party with a handgun, a concealed carry permit, who knows you know, what, what, what the training they went on, under. I think the important point is that we have the students and the faculty and, and, and staff trained in this ALICE program. You have a concealed carry permit person in the building, not knowing the, what training these folks have been under. We don't need that in our schools. This is, this is really a, um, a safety issue, not a gun issue. Um, as the previous speaker mentioned, um, this has to do with uh, the safety of our children, and that really is probably one of the most important criteria for, for, this, for this body is to protect the safety of our children and our community. Having concealed carry uh, permit people in our schools is a safety issue. It's not a gun issue. Um, if this resolution is not, if this legislation is not passed at the state level, that would mean that the and the federal legislation that is attempting to go through right now at the federal level is passed, there's a good chance that that will happen. That means that 16.3 million concealed carry permit holders, 16.3 nationally, will be able to come to our schools, our sporting events, our activities with a concealed carry and will not have to inform anybody that they have a concealed that they have a weapon with them. I ask you, uh, I, I just, I did want to point out um, that the current legislation, um, uh, counter to what one of the uh, out-of-city lobbyists mentioned, the current legislation now uh, allows retired police officers to carry a concealed weapon um, to the school grounds if that legislation is passed. Um, I, uh, I have a few other points that uh, if, if this hopefully does come up uh, for discussion and I ask that you consider this resolution and as was previously pointed out, it's only a resolution. We're just asking you to talk about it, discuss it, and, and make a vote. And possibly pass that on up to, uh, up to the state level. Uh, again, this is a safety issue, not a gun issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Um, I've been letting everybody go for about three minutes, so when I kind of pick up the gavel, you're already at three, so if, if we can want to get as many people in to speak as possible, so try to try to keep it succinct if you can. Good evening, Roderick. Good evening, Council Chairman and Council Members. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, I've spoken to this issue a number of times before. Name that is the record officially. Okay. Thomas Wojcik, 11 Hall Place, Cranston, Rhode Island. Could you speak up, sir? I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. Um, on the way over here, I said to my wife, you know, I'm very proud of being part of the organization, the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence. But I also feel like wearing this shirt separates us into tribes. I don't want to be against the yellow shirts, against the orange shirts. This is not what this is about. It's not tribal warfare. It's not feel-good resolution either. This is about children. This is about your children, your grandchildren. We always talk about mass murders. 
Well, most accidents with guns happen because of accidents. And because humans are humans. They make mistakes. They leave their guns in inappropriate places. They drop them in restrooms and injure themselves. They leave them on buses. And I don't care what the Second Amendment says, those 3,500 people are human beings. They make as many mistakes as any other human being does. And because you are a concealed weapons permit holder, it doesn't mean that you don't have human problems. Since 07, 23 of the mass murders were committed by concealed carry permit holders, more than any other group, other than domestic violence. There's no immunity because you have this license or this permit. It's not about feel good. It's about prevention. Ramsey and other speakers are right. This is a public safety issue. This is a child safety issue. This respects the wishes and desires of parents, of grandparents. A few moments ago, you talked about the Chapel Hill thing. And you rely on experts to give you the information as to whether you're going to make a decision about traffic studies, about land use. The school committee, the experts that monitor the school and deal with the school every day for the last few years have voted for this. Teachers are the professionals have voted for this. The principals' associations, the people who have to run their organization are for this. They want to know if there's someone in that building carrying a gun. They have a huge responsibility and we're denying them that right. Why, as politicians, do you reject professionals' opinions on this? Why do you reject the Police Chiefs Association? Why do you reject, reject all of the professionals who say that this is the wrong thing? This is taking a risk. It's putting our children in harm's way. You need to do your job. You need to take a vote on this. Your job is to support the citizens' wishes. You won't even take a vote on this. That is not supporting wishes. That's showing a lack of courage. And the thing we need most in this world right now is for people to have courage and to stand up and be on record for what their values are and what they care about and what you're committed to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lord. The Good evening, Dana Holmgren, 161 Frontcrest Avenue, Cranston. Thank you, members of the City Council. Um, as a former school nurse, I would I want to go on record as being in favor of the No Guns in Schools resolution. I agree with the speakers who've spoken previously that this is an issue about our children's health and safety, and I agree that the City Council members need to go on record in terms of voting on this resolution. Thank you. Good evening. Hi there. My name is Susan Hodgen. I live at 108 Betsy Williams Drive in Cranston. So I'm coming to speak tonight as a teacher in the classroom. I taught for about 12 years in the Cranston Public Schools at Bain Middle School, Stadium Elementary, Rhodes Elementary, and Edgewood Highland. And as someone who's worked with that age group kindergarten all the way up, I can tell you there's no concealed anything in elementary school. Kids will find everything in your desk drawer. They're loving and innocent, and they'll come up and hug you. And I am worried about accidents with the best of intentions for help. I understand that intention, but I also worry about um, accidents that might happen with concealed carry permits on school grounds. And the odd thing is that nobody knows. Nobody has to know. If you go to an airport, you can't do that. If you go to the state house, you can't do that. Why, can, why are those places safer to work than where I work? So thank you. Anyone 
wants to speak. Good evening, name and address for the record, please. My name is Jack Peters. I live in uh, I'm on 14 Shore Road in Riverside, Rhode Island. Uh, skip across the bay. I was around in 1990 when this was instituted. Okay, a lot of people have short-term memories. In 1986, Stockton, California happened. That was a mass shooting on school grounds. 1987, 1989. Our Attorney General back in 1990 did not want the same incident to happen here in Rhode Island that it happened in Texas, Oregon, and California. So, we got a program together to train some teachers how to use a firearm, as well as how to use a fire extinguisher, believe it or not, as a defensive weapon. We did this with the intent of saving children's lives. That's what this whole program was about then and should be now. We need people in the schools that will react and react properly when an incident happens. And we have been lucky in Rhode Island because there's been a few incidences, but they never made the paper. And a good guy with a gun and a good teacher or administrator with a gun actually stopped events. Thank you. Thank you. David Hatters, the record. Melissa Jenkins, 135 Arnold Avenue, Cranston. I want to remind you all that we're coming up on the fifth anniversary of Sandy Hook. After the tragedy in Sandy Hook, a lot of school systems decided it would be a good idea to train some teachers, to have some responders ready with concealed weapons so that the good guy could take out the bad guy. In fact, that's not what happened. They trained teachers, teachers took guns into schools, and accidents involving the guns increased. So there were no incidents where the teachers used the guns effectively to take out the bad guy. Instead, they accidentally injured themselves or someone else was injured as a result of their good intentions. So while the idea of training teachers is good, the outcome is bad. Accidents involving guns are a real problem, and that's why children and guns simply don't belong in the same place. It's not a Second Amendment issue. It's not a gun issue. Nobody's taking gun rights away. It's a simple matter of guns belong in a safe place. Children belong in a different safe place. Guns don't belong in schools. And we need to start the conversation here. We need to go on record and have a vote on this issue. It's way past time. Thank you. Michael Denon, 22 Duchess Drive, Cranston. I just want to back up the statements that uh, my fellow gun supporters earlier. Really, really but what I wanted to point out is we're not asking to bring guns into the school. We're asking and we're pointing out the fact that this has been going on for 20 plus years. We have a track record and a history of success. This failure of, of guns in the school and, and people afraid that bad things are going to happen, that's looking at what might happen. We only have a proven track record that what we are doing today is working. Why are you trying to fix something that's not broken? Thank you. Anyone else? There being none, that section of the meeting is now open. Did you want to? Come on. Sorry, I absolutely did not come here prepared to speak. I have a grandson who's at Cranston West. My name is Dana Pickett, 65 Boone Street in North Kingston. Could you speak into the mic? I can't hear you. Sorry. Very short. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure why this is even an issue. Children and guns don't belong together. It's just not a good idea to have guns in a place where ac 
accidents, dropping them, leaving them in a coat, leaving them in a locker, leaving them anywhere where children can have access to them or when accidents can happen. I don't understand why anybody thinks that having guns in schools is a good idea. I don't think any teacher wants to see parents coming in for conferences packing a gun or a PTA meeting, people having guns, or as someone else mentioned, school events where tempers often flare. It just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. of the evening. On to resolutions. There are no res Oh, I'm sorry. Come on up. I will reopen public comment for more speaker. Two minutes, because you're about cans. Well, uh, I, I, there's something on the docket, and it's not on the docket, so do I get six minutes? <laughs> uh, basically, I'm here uh, to uh, thank you all. Uh, name and I was the record. Uh, name, name and I was the record. The clerk shall name. My name is Greg Milka, and I'm here uh, representing Sandra Moyer, who is the president of the Cranston Historical Society. I live at the Governor's Spread Mansion, 1351 Cranston Street. Craig, sir. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I'm uh, here on Sandra's behalf to thank all of you, especially Paula Kettle, who is on our, our uh, who's a member of the Cranston Historical Society, uh, and many of you who uh, attended the uh, unveiling of the uh, Wall Square uh, Veterans Monument uh, cannons. Two of the three have been re returned back to Cranston. Uh, and uh, it was a nice event, and uh, I think it really hit home how all of you stepped forward and uh, did, did your best to help recognize the service of Cranston veterans. However, and this is the other part that's not on the docket, I guess, uh, returning to the cannons is really phase one. Really, what we need to consider is what to do with the Ralph Square Veterans Monument. The Ralph Square Veterans Monument was put up, of course, in the early 1920s, and it was intended by veterans of the Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, and carried on through all of the uh, uh, conflicts and wars since then to uh, uh, honor and uh, respect all veterans. Uh, it's across the street from the school. They, they did that on purpose to uh, uh, teach children, uh, future generations, the importance of serving your country honorably. The, uh, uh, Robin is sitting over there, and I'd like to thank her for all her efforts as well. But uh, Paul, uh, he, I've known Paul for a, a long time, and, and he uh, uh, sunk his teeth into this and really helped uh, uh, contact our others. And uh, I know he uh, uh, discussed all of these matters with you as well. But the Ralph Square Monument is still there. Keep in mind, Cranston. When the cannons were removed, the cannon that's on the monument now is a French Pac-75. That was a, a World War II cannon was put there to uh, honor Cranston World War II veterans of Albany Post. The problem with that is, is of the 16 million American World War II veterans, not one in the Pacific Theater, or the European Theater, or here stateside, ever served on or fired a French Pac-75. It does not represent Cranston World War II veterans. Uh, so I mentioned to Paul, why don't, why don't you consider this? Uh, contact Cranston East, Cranston West, Auburn Post, General Centracchio, the National Guard, and come up with a, a project to do something uh, positive with the Ralph Square Monument that actually says what the veterans said in the, in the 1920s, to honor and respect. Winston Churchill once said, the farther back you're willing to look, the farther ahead you'll be able to see more clearly, and now you know how to navigate your way 
invest from the present into the future. This is what that monument means. It's what the cannons that are now in the carriage house at the Governor Sprague Mansion, that's what that means. And they will be there for all of you and the people of Cranston to see any time you want. Uh, and, but they can't go back on the monuments, so what do you do? Maybe uh, contact the National Guard, the Paul King Foundry, uh, Keith Langton, Graham at the uh, uh, Champion Foundation, and do something positive with that monument involving the students of both high schools. That's my message to you. And again, Paul, thank you for all your effort. You too, President Nefrina, and Robin. Carlos and me from everybody. Thank you for what you've done so far for the Golf Squad Monument and the veterans of Cranston. Thank you, sir. Ron, are you good? Do you want to take a five-minute break? You can just check in. I'll take Okay, moving on. We have no resolution before us this evening. Uh, we'll move on to report of committees. Finance Committee, Council Vice President Favecchio. Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, First, we had on the Finance Committee 10-17-01, ordinance ratifying the school committee's collective bargaining agreement with the National Association of Government, Government Employees, Local 53 Custodian Unit. This is for the term July 1, 2017 to June 30, 2020. And introduced pursuant to Charter Section 11.02.1. It passed unanimously uh, at committee average passage today. I want to send a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion to a second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Next, we have 10-17-02. This ordinance ratifies the school crew's collective bargaining agreement with uh, Rhode Island Council 94. AFL-CIO on behalf of Cranston Public School Employees Local 2044 Secretary's Unit, July 1, 2017 to June 30, 2020, introduced pursuant to the same same charter, Section 11.02.1. This also passed unanimously. The village passes tonight. Motion approved. Second. Have it. Uh, I have motion approved. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> there being no further discussion, or any discussion. Seeing none, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Okay. Next we have resolution authorizing motor vehicle tax abatements. This also will pass unanimously at committee. Do you have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. 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 Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Okay. Next we have. Where is it? Resolution authorizing. Tangible tax abatements, there's only one on there that uh, was approved unanimously as well. There is passage. I have a motion to approve. Do have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 And lastly, we have the tax interest waiver approvals. They will also pass unanimously at passage tonight. Okay, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Second. Yes. 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 That closes the business of the Finance Committee, Ordinance Committee, Councilman, uh, Councilman Dreyer, Papalowskis. Thank you, Mr. Council President. We have in front of us this evening, 9-1703, Ordinance Amendment of Chapter 17 of the Code of City of Cranston 2005, entitled Zoning, Change of Zone, Chapel View Boulevard, as amended in committee, which I believe passed unanimous.
Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. Under discussion, if anyone has any questions, the Capital Hill Corporation is here to answer them, uh, but Council Mulaney. Um, the only question was brought up by some of the speakers earlier, uh, the traffic study. I think that's the big question that we all have. Uh, are we approving something without a traffic study in place? Um, I think we need a traffic study to see the impact of any new development would occur at Chapel View before we okay this particular ordinance. Um, I'd like to make an amendment, or a motion, I should say, to continue this until the traffic study is completed. Now put that in the form of a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second under discussion. Council Vice President Fedecchio. Thank you, Council President. Um, well, to address Council Rooney's uh, issue, um, first of all, this is, does not deal with the next section of uh, Chapel View. This only deals with the existing developed area. And I don't think we heard from the Carpinato group again tonight as to there's only one issue that I think that, the, that was brought up in terms of part of the land behind Shores. Uh, that that's not developed and that could have a big box store. Um, I think that was the only real question that was uh, asked tonight that might af be affected by this. Other than that, um, this, this does not involve the next phase of, of Chapel View. Uh, so 90% of this parcel, this piece is already built. I don't, I don't see how that's going to make a difference. Um, the, the traffic plans um, have been, there have been extensive work done uh, by the Capinato Group, and I believe they've met with the state, they've met with the city, um, and they're going to present that to the, the residents long before the fountains, so-called fountains aspect of this is going to be heard. So um, we are concerned about the traffic issues, um, but I, don't, I really don't think that those traffic concerns really involve this piece of this. This is only a very limited piece to this development. Um, you know, we could ask Mr. Uh, Coates or some one of the engineers to, to address this, um, or, or the administration if, if they would like to weigh in. But I, I don't see where um, this part of it um, really needs to have that kind of uh, continuance. And, and I would just, I would want to echo Council Fabricio's position on this or, or or his take on it, as I understand this, the there would always be future traffic studies for any major development in Chapel View that goes on. There is a commitment right now for a traffic study in Sakonoset and Pontiac, uh, but that's already committed to moving forward. That's going to happen, and there's, they only have to do sort of a shadow study where an independent reviewer does it as well. So there are checks and balances in place. Anything that happens still has to go in front of site plan review and has to go through the whole planning process. So there, absolutely, the traffic comes in as a top priority for administration as well as I'm sure all of you and neighbors. That's, for me, the probably most critical aspect of what's going to happen inside of that chapter of view is what that's going to do to impact the outside. The commitments and the requirements that, that Carpinato and the state have engaged in to ensure that those traffic studies are done uh, is part and parcel of why we need to stand in support of this. Because that is the, the, the for, 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 for us, there's a benefit to that intersection when you fix where the carving out of one more building in there or not. So I can ask the funny as you all know has to get fixed. At this point, the funding for that study is actually going to come as a result of developing a copy of Boston Chapel View. Councilman. All right. Um, I'm glad you explained that to me and the audience also because I was under the impression that um, traffic studies were for the entire parcel, not just this a little section behind the Shores Market. Uh, yeah, if I may come to the um, yeah, the, uh, it's actually very extensive. The, the traffic view is actually four intersections and not just um, Sock and Osset. It's London. There are there basically are like four intersections or four uh, specific areas that are involved in their plans. Um, 
London two areas on New London Avenue, New London and the Shanika Valley Parkway, New London as the exit ramp, um, through 37, yeah. uh, and Pontiac and Sakonasa in Pontiac. So there are four distinct areas that are involved, but they, again, th those things are not, what's on the agenda tonight, uh, this area, um, and you can ask the question, I guess, of Mr. Uh, Coates as far as whether that area behind Shores, I, I don't believe that that's got any, has any, there's any planned use of that for a big box store. I think it's all wetlands, if I mean. I just want to add one thing, if I could, through it, Chair. May. <clears throat> the, for what I understand in reading the, the ordinances before the council tonight, it's more of a change in form for how the Carpinato group obtains its approvals more than what it can do at the site. They no longer want to be bound by this this MDP model that they were in, and now they want to go under existing codes and approvals so they don't have to go through this cumbersome process for the little changes that they had to experience under the MDP. So that, that's all it is. I know everyone is um, concerned about traffic and development, but this really is a form of a substance, I believe. Thank you, Attorney. Councilman Manny. Yeah, to finish my question, I guess. Um, do you have any idea when the traffic study will be completed? I'll accept any kind of a rough estimate. This year? Mr. Cook, do you have an estimate on when you will have the traffic studies completed between the state? Um, Councilman Lanning, uh, is there a address to him directly, Mr. Chairman, or President? So, um, the, uh, count, the uh, initial traffic studies have all been completed. We've been given a list of intersections to study. That was approved in the master plan approved for the fountains at Chapel View. So, the fountains at Chapel View is not on the agenda tonight. The only thing is on is, is um, is for Chapel View. Chapel View currently has an MPD, uh, MPD zoning. We've worked with you, uh, Council Lanning, many, many, many times on that. And that may, makes us happen to come back before the City Council. An error in the planning department years ago had part of the roads and part of the development being zoned open space because it formerly was state-owned property. But it's zoned MPD. And so that goes all the way back to 37. So it's to clarify an error. And so that's why planning staff, we did this, recommended this rezone. In fact, they contacted us several times pushing it to get their records cleaned up. So that the MPD and the C5, we get rid of the MPD mechanism and we add a C5. However, in the C5, I know you, you and I have spoken on traffic many times. I know you're a great concern for the neighborhood and, um, and, and to protect it. And so the C5 zoning is called C5 with conditions. One of the conditions on there is that if we increase traffic at Chapel View with any more development for its continuing life, that we have to do traffic studies and if the traffic studies show that mitigation is required, then we also have to do the mitigation. So it does exactly what a couple of the speakers talked about. But they're talking about the development on a separate lots on separate pieces of property. This is just zoning this. This is exactly what the council just completed with Garden City. So it's a rezone, one consistent zone for Garden City. So it's also what many of you sat on the council doing, did, is we rezoned the 100th Sakonasset, the fountains, and then this will all be one consistent zone. As far as the traffic study, the traffic study additional counts are being done through right now this season, because you want to know what the worst condition is, not the best, and so they're doing, being done through this season, and then they're going to be finished up in January and February. We have offered to meet with the uh, leaders of the community group, or neighborhood association on traffic. I, I think that they're going to be able to get their times together. We'll meet with them sometime in mid-December, and then with a larger group, we're going to start having neighborhood groups meetings so people can come and see that. We're going to invite the council, but it won't be a council meeting. And we'll do that over the next several months before any development proposals are again 
come back before the planning board. So it's done in an orderly process. The first things are taken into concern, all the concerns, and then we finish that up. Thank you. Yes, sir. Councilman Stekos. Um, yes, my question, I, I don't know if this is for uh, Councilman Fedicchio or the administration. The, uh, you know, I'm also concerned about traffic, but um, I'm also concerned about the traffic study and what the result of that may be. Let's say there's a traffic study with a recommendation, and this count and this what's before us tonight passes, um, and there's a traffic study done, and we don't like the traffic study. Uh, the residents don't like it. They think it's the whole situation is going to be a, a problem. What? Uh, if this passes tonight, what leverage does the city council have to control this uh, large redevelopment? I, I can answer that. Councilman Fevecchio. I can answer that. Well, the, the, the fountains would have to come back to us. This does not affect any new, any development, that future development with that big, bigger parcel uh, that we're talking about. So I think we could... Um, correct me if I'm wrong from the administration, but I, I think we could prevent that from going forward. It has, that is not before us tonight at this point in time. Uh, I thought that we, that the, the council uh, granted a pretty wide-ranging zone change for that other parcel. We did, but there's, there's still many, many facets of, of approval that are necessary. So I'm, I'm but I, but I, yeah, but I don't think that comes before this council. Can, that's my concern. Well, I'll leave it to you. Well, before, before you speak, we're, we're running dangerously close on something here. Attorney question, Bob. I just wanted to say this has nothing to do with the future development. Some people call for fountains. This, this has nothing to do with that tonight. So this is not on the agenda. This ordinance has everything to do with Chapel View as we know it today. So speculating about what happens on a different ordinance doesn't really help us on what we have constructed today and what the uses of that construction could be. I think that's all we're talking about. Well, um, Councilman Lanny has uh, made a, a motion to uh, postpone or to continue because he's concerned about traffic. And Councilman Favicchio is saying, um, essentially, there's traffic studies. And my concern is that, you know, whether there's studies or there aren't studies, there may be what this council considers and the residents consider to be a traffic problem. So uh, my opinion, and I'm, I, that's why I asked this question, and I think I got the answer, is that if we approve this now, without really knowing what's going to happen at that whole site. And as Mr. Coates said, uh, it's all kind of tied together. Um, and it's all these pieces are tied together. That we don't have any, uh, we the council don't have any uh, avenue for affecting the traffic or the development on that site. Because they'll have this very, broad, what I would call basically blank check zoning approval uh, without us knowing anything about the traffic consequences. So that's why, uh, unless I can be, get some information that I'm mistaken, I would support the continuation so we can see how this whole thing is, is fleshing out and we can make a decision on um, what is, is best for that, that whole area. Any other questions about Councilman Arkell? Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, you asked for discussing Council Lewis and then uh, asking you for a little leeway. On the I've been given a little bit, so I'm going to allow it to continue. My concern is the traffic also. The residents expressed that. I'm wondering, uh, was this presented before the planning board? It was. Yes. I can, I can answer that. It was. It was. And did the planning board vote in favor of the memorandum? Uh, all but one. 
So there was one negative vote on the plenary board. Is that correct, Mr. Coates? Yes, yes that is correct. correct. Okay, thank you. This now before the zoning board through the chair, Mr. Coates. Was it before the zoning board? The NPD ordinance doesn't allow any uh, zoning board action. So it wasn't before the zoning board? It was board. never before the zoning board, okay. no, sir. So from, from the planning board to the council, correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. As of now, there hasn't been an extensive traffic study done in the area, correct? Oh, no, that's 100% incorrect. Because you sat on the council, you were on the council, the other ones were just new coming along. But the traffic studies are this thick. It's called Chapel View. It's, there's some confusion, right? So when you just rezoned Garden City, there were no traffic studies. It just got rezoned. We're doing the same thing that the same everybody here just voted on at, Chapel, or at Garden City, which is to rezone how their rules are going forward. The thing before you also adds in, that's not in the Garden City requirement, that if we do anything with traffic generation, I've got to do traffic mitigation. Garden City doesn't have that. We are adding that in. So this is Chapel View. It's not what the confusion is. We hear the neighbors. We want to sit with them. We've got a magnificent project coming up. Has nothing to do with this. This is changing how Chapel View. Okay, so 153 meetings before the Histor Historic District Commission. Historic District Commission, when we put up the Orange Theory signage, they had to approve Orange Theory signage on a brand new building that used to be a Dad's Montana grill, right? That's new construction. But the way the ordinance is written, every sign on every building, every color, everything has to get approved by them. Every planting, all of it. So what the ordinance before you says is, now the Historic District Commission only reviews the historic tree, the three historic dormitories, the chapel, and the stone wall, the things that are historic. Even the state historic doesn't want to see all the rest of this stuff. But for the chapel, the state historic wants to continue to see that. So it cleans up. This is just a mechanism. Traffic is being brought in because neighbors are concerned about the next project. There's nothing being built on this project. This is Chapel View. And it changes the zoning to C5 to match everything else that's around it. It eliminates a spot zone, in effect. So an NPD is something that no one knew how cumbersome it was going to work. The Historic District Commission, people had, they couldn't get, uh, I don't know, I've had 15 meetings where they couldn't get a quorum. And so you've got to go to the next meeting. Starbucks can't get signage. Got to go to the next meeting. Garden City doesn't have that. Nobody else in the city has that. So this mechanism has been worked out for many, 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 many months by the planning staff. And it's consistent exactly with what the same vote was for CHAP for Garden City. Thank you for your lengthy oration. Um, Mr. Coates, so the answer was then, I was incorrect and there has been an extensive traffic study on this. Yes, sir. Change. That's, That's right. your answer. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Councilman May? All right, um, just to follow up on that. When we voted on Garden City, uh, we allowed the Planning Commission to make any future decisions concerning, concerning, concerning we should say, uh, development in Garden City. Is this exactly the same procedure now? Yes. So Chapel View, uh, if there's any changes in the future, uh, it'll go before the Planning Commission for their okay. Yes, say okay, it does not come to the City Council, so we have no vote on this whatsoever in the future as concerning any changes that are approved by the Planning Commission. Oh, only on Chapel View. But nothing to do with the training school, nothing to do with the Citizens Bank property. They're not before you. That's correct. That is correct. All right. And so in other words, this, this council is um, con continuing to give away its authority as a council to represent the people out there by having it going before a planning commission who's not, who are not made up of elected officials to make the decisions for the city of Queenston. Councilman Arquetto. Thank you, uh, President Freeman. Um, 
I don't see any non support in the council ladies allowing to continue. If, if once we vote, it's out of our hands. I think that's a very dangerous uh, road to travel. I think we need to uh, take some caution here and uh, make sure the traffic study comes across in a positive way. I'll be supporting council ladies and women. Anybody else? Councilman Kaplowskis. Thank you, Mr. Council President. I just have a question now. If, you, if there are any changes made at Chapel View, Mr. Coates, does it, do you come to the City Council now or does it go to the Historic Commission? Yes, we do come before the Council now on any changes at Chapel View. Okay. And that's part of that. But that's not normal zoning. That's not in the Statewide Enabling Act for zoning. A planning board has its proper role. A zoning board have, it has its proper role. They have no role on Chapel View. The, the zoning board doesn't. Okay. The MPD does not allow the zoning board to function on that property. But there's a failsafe in the ordinance for any future building that you would mitigate the tra any increased traffic. That is correct. Unlike what just got passed for Garden City, there is for Chapel View a failsafe which we agreed to, which says if we, if we increase traffic above a threshold, then at that point a traffic study has to be done and any mitigation required under the traffic that is called for. Now, okay. uh, one more question. Yeah. This is just the area where the historic buildings were. This is, is just the area of Tom Chapel View. Nothing to do with all that area below Shaw's, all that parking lot area, all that down the hill. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one more question. One more quick question. Okay, Council Vicky. One more quick question, sorry, Council President. To through the chair to Mr. Kirschenbaum. If we did nothing, what would the copying out properties be able to do? Oh. If you did nothing, they'd be stuck with the MPD model, which I think they're saying is more cumbersome to to navigate through. They might be restricted on the type of tenants that they would be able to attract. I don't really think that, you know, right now, what they have here, to my eyes, and I'm not a builder, but to my eyes, it looks premature. But, yeah, so they say, have, what's what's not, what could possibly be building on anyway? I mean, I don't, I can't, you know, I can't look into the future, but it looks like those buildings that they have there are there to stay. So I, I wouldn't anticipate a new structure coming up anywhere large in that, the parking lot or something, I mean, that, that would, it would give them more flexibility, I think, to attract tenants not to go through the historic district commission every time someone wants to put up a sign or something that's irrelevant to what our purposes are. I mean, the building's heights aren't going to change. I mean, the, you know, all these, the same things we had before are going to be there. So nothing could, I don't know how much could be built on. That's, I guess, my question. If there's nothing that can be built on, then what, what are we arguing about? I, mean, Mr. Co I don't know if Mr. Coates has any um, comment on that. <laughs> Councilman Stakos. Well, of, of course there's things that could be built on. Um, just like they built the current buildings, they just have to go through some kind of regulatory approval. But I mean, they want to tear down the Shaw's building, they could... Right. Oh, ask could that be turned down? And that some that a cross go there, or that a that a, a, a hotel, or a hospital, or a, you know all the things on this list, and we wouldn't have any say over it. Well, you, in the in, in ordinance presented to the council, you do have a land use allocation chart, which is the uses that Carpinato will permit in the ordinance and the uses that they want. What's proposed? So on, what? Yeah, so on in section three in the condition section. There are things that can go there and things that cannot. So it's pretty easy to figure out. Okay, if everybody's done, I'm gonna ask the expert in the room a couple questions. Jason, could you have the podium? Thank you, Deputy 
Rebecca, if you could just give us the opinion of the planning board on this matter. Okay, so this ordinance has been in process for a long time. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, recommended approval to, to the City Council on this. The simple fact that the ordinance as it's, as it's currently structured has run its course. It's fully developed site. Um, we feel that the continued need to bring applicants for everything that go on within the bounds, the wall, the new buildings, the old buildings, to the historic district commission is again is really run its course where it's it's not effective anymore. You know, historically reviewing Starbucks drive through, you know, historically reviewing Ted's Montana grill signs, things like that. Um, the staff has been supportive of, the, of this idea for several years that you know, its time has come. The other problem with the existing zone is that it's hyper specific. When I say that, every building, every floor, every use has a very specific uh, prescription. So if there's any kind of variance between what they had asked for in 1998, um, they had to come back to the city council to do amendments. I think we've, we did about nine or 10 major amendments and at least 10 or 15 minor amendments, which again, is, it, it became ridiculous. It just became ridiculous. No other site within the city had to deal with this level of bureaucracy and this level of regulation anywhere. I don't, I don't know if any, any project anywhere in the state has had to deal with bureaucracy like this. So now that we're at a, a build out of the, of the site, it's time to rethink where we were going with this in addition to what we've already done with the fountains and the citizen site. We're looking to unify the, the zones. So, second question. Do you think of more protection with it going through zoning or coming before the council? Uh, because the MPD doesn't go before zoning today, it goes to planning than us. Right now, the MPD, you're saying right now the MPD. So everything that, every, all the changes with the MPD right now go to the city council. It's the only you know, situation like that in the city. Um, I don't think that we're losing any protections per se because we're treating it like zoning for every other property within the city that have zones. Um, we're not, there's not to say that there's a carte blanche with, with this zone. You still have development plan review, you still have the planning commission to go through for all these developments. So um, we're essentially treating it just like any other project, like Garden City, like anything else. So the city's still protected? Yeah, we have the, the typical, we have the typical development pattern. Whereas this MPD is so far afield of typical, it's, it drives us crazy. Last question, do you see the need for, for a traffic study uh, in association with this ordinance on, as currently developed? Tra traffic studies have been done ad, ad nauseum for this site. Traffic improvements have been done and constructed and built for this site over many years. So for this corner, that's all completed. Thank you. Councilman Stikos. Just a couple of things I'd like to um, clarify in the comment. Um, uh, one question for Jason. How many MPDs are there in the city? Uh, off the top of my head, I believe we've done seven or eight in, within the city, at least in my, my time here. So there's seven or eight MPDs, so this is not the yes. only MPD. Right. Um, the a second thing I'd like to point out is that while the council, um, uh, and this is really for members of the public, while the council did approve uh, what I would say is a blank check zoning for Garden City, uh, that was not a unanimous vote. There were uh, three of us who opposed that. Uh, and um, lastly, I, I'd like to, I think, one of the problems I have with this is that there's, there's just too much packaged in here um, together. Uh, 
frankly, what I'm hearing about the whole historic district commission, uh, that makes some sense to me with the complaints that it's uh, overly uh, restrictive for properties that are not historic. However, the real meat of this is in the uh, uses, the uh, use table. And I really don't know what that uh, opens us uh, up to that isn't there now. And uh, I just think the, the signage provisions, I mean, this is a, this is a major, a major uh, change to the top, uh, probably the number one commercial area in our city. And I think it, it needs more close look. I think it probably should be divided up into pieces so that we can talk about the historic district commission issues and come to some kind of a agreement on them and get that out of the way and then go to the, the, the other provisions, the signs and the usage and the setbacks and God knows what else is in here. Um, so I, I think uh, uh, I think Councilman Lanny's uh, uh, proposal to continue is, is the safe way to go and Chapel View has to wait a little longer. Well, you know, let's let's do this right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take a roll on Councilman Lee's amendment for a traffic study. Councilman Lee? Yes. Captain Hopkins? No. Captain Stegos? Yes. Councilman Coy? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Coulter? No. Councilman Coy? No. Councilman Coy? No. On the motion, uh, Councilman Cycles, we spoke. We spoke a lot the last session. And would anyone else who wants to speak go first? And if no one else wants to speak, I will come back to you. Anyone else want to speak on the motion? All right, Councilman Cycles, you're up. Okay, I have an uh, amendment to offer. This would be on uh, on uh, page 14 of the amended. Uh, conditions, and I'll uh, state the amendment. Hopefully, I'll uh, uh, get a second, and then I will explain the point of it. Under E, and this has to do with the historic district uh, issue. Uh, it currently, there's a sentence starts under E1. It says any future changes of the three dormitory buildings, the state chapel the connecting buildings, the historic cemetery, and or the historic stone walls located along Route 2 and Sakonata Crossroad periphery of the site will be submitted to the Cranston Historic District Commission for approval. Okay, so this is what uh, Mr. Uh, Coates talked about extensively. And what my amendment would be is to add after the words any future changes to and add the words plat 14 lot one. And what that um, what that would do is it would the as it's written, just these buildings and stone wall are go to the historic district commission. But that's really a, a historic corner, and the area around it is important to those, um, to those buildings. And just to give kind of a, I mean, something could go up in the parking lot, for instance, or there could be a change in the parking lot that would um, drastically um, damage the historical impact of the buildings. So what Plat 14, Lot 1 is, is it's uh, the area around those buildings, the land around those buildings, and the parking. Um, I think it's bordered by uh, Power Road and what's it called, Chapel View Drive. It's that section right around the, if you took the chapel 
and the dormitory buildings and the stone walls, and then the roads would make it kind of into a square. Uh, that would be the, the uh, non-building part would be plat 14, lot 1. So that's uh, my amendment is to just add the words plat 14, lot 1, and I hope someone will second it. I'm not sure I understand it. I'll second it for discussion. I have a motion and a second. Um, I'm not sure what that does. So, yeah. is it the whole site? No. It is not. Um, is it the parking lot? We want the parking lot to be part of the historic district commission? Yes. The, the parking lot that is, I thought I had a map here, but I, um, it's the parking lot that is, um, it's the parking, oh, there, there's Cap, uh, Chapel View Boulevard which is the road that comes off New London Avenue. So uh, if I'm, uh, I think I've got this correct. It's, so it would be bordered by going on Chapel View Boulevard to that first intersection, which is, I think, Powell Road, and then go from Powell Road to Sakonasset, and then up Sakonasset to New London, and then down New London to Chapel View. So the buildings that it would encompass are the, the, uh, the chapel, the dormitories, and, uh, and uh, the historic cemeteries in there, the stone walls in there, the parking lots that are in there, the parking lots for those buildings are in there. But it does not include Shaw's or that whole big new, new mall type uh, building on the other side of the road, um, on the other side of Chapel View Boulevard, or that big parking area, or the, or the big tree for that matter, which is covered separately in the ordinance. Any discussion, Councilman Babauskas? I guess my concern with the amendment is it seems like there's a lot of stuff in there that's not historic, like a Staples and, I don't know, Panera Bread and all oh, that stuff. So all of that, to go back to the historic, it kind of undercuts the whole purpose of the onerous MPD the way it is now. It seems like we're putting more restrictions back on, on growth. So that's my only concern, I guess. Thank you, Councilman. Any other discussion? Councilman for the I, I, yeah, I still don't really understand what uh, this is doing. I mean, it, it, the Stark uh, Commission still has authority under what Mr. Coates was talking about with regard to those three buildings, the cemetery. So are we just adding, we're not adding the Shores, are we adding the Shores parking lot? No. So it doesn't, isn't that what we're already doing? I'm, I'm just trying to understand the, um, the extent of it. it. It doesn't go down into the vacant land where the, the training school was, correct? It just stops at Powell Road behind near where Qdoba and uh, Panera, is it, right? It just covers that. I mean, doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem much different than what what's proposed, uh, you know, except to add the parking lots, I guess, which I don't know what you can do to parking lots. Uh, but, I mean, I know you can build something, but th there's really no room there to build anything. Um, on that particular part. Well, I think that we don't know that, really. I mean, I, you might say that now, but who knows what's going to happen there. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I mean, so I guess it really doesn't matter. To, to me, it doesn't matter. I don't know if Mr. Coates has any comment, but that doesn't seem to uh, change much of anything. If there's no other comments, I'm going to ask the clerk to take a look. Yes. Councilman Hopkins? No. Councilman Cycles? Yes. Councilman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Hill? Yes. Councilman Colbert? No. Councilman Pepper No. Councilman Pepper No. No. Any further discussion on the ordinance?
Councilman Cyclos. Uh, under on page four in the use table, uh, we propose to eliminate, uh, to change retail, sale, large scale from uh, yes to no. Information isn't there a Shaw's already on the site, which is retail scale? Yes, and that would make Shaw's have to close tomorrow. I, I believe things like that are uh, grandfathered, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Do you have a second on that? No. I have no second. We got a motion to approve the ordinance as amended. We have a motion to approve the ordinance as amended. Do have a second? Second. Second. I have a second. Under discussion. Councilman Stegos. I uh, approve, I uh, propose eliminating on um, page four on the use table uh, fuel. Station full service, changing that from S to N. With a motion and a second. Councilman, I have a motion to approve in a second. And I'm, I'm amending the motion. Yeah. Just like we always do. Um, my lawyer's telling me you can't do that, so I'll have him talk to you if you want. First of all, we already made a motion. A motion was already made to approve the proposal. That's how we're discussing it. And I'm making an amendment, and the amendment, like any amendment, comes before the final passage. To, to the way, do we have to act on the motion to approve first before we talk about the amendments? for amendments, um, both failed. Motion was made to approve as amended. Councilman with the second. Councilman's trying to continue to make more amendments. Would we have to vote it up or down before we get more amendments, or can we get more amendments? No, I think you, um, the motion to approve needs to be voted on. We can discuss the motion to approve. Yes. But we can't make more amendments to it. No, I don't believe it's proper to make to amend motions. You can um, you can you can't you can make a motion to amend. I am not familiar with actually amending a motion once it's made. It has to be voted. If there's another motion to amend, that can be introduced. But they're separate things, I believe. I don't believe that you can amend a motion once it's been made. Madam Clerk, you are up. Oh, I thought you were going to have some cogent theory to ask. rules of order, there are, there's a, a hierarchy of motions. So you start out with a motion to approve whatever the, whatever's on the agenda. And then there's a whole hierarchy of motions. Councilman Lanny made a motion to continue. You can make motions to amend. You could make a motion to send it back to committee. You could make a, um, 
tabling, all those motions have to be considered before the final passage. You, you can't say, oh, it's final passage and um, you can't make any more amendments. It's just, it's not in Robert's rules. So um, I want to make an amendment and when that amendment is, is considered, then it we're back to uh, either an amended version of the, uh, of the ordinance uh, if the amendment passes, or we're back to the original ordinance if the amendment fails. Thank you, Councilman. That's why I said to make your amendment. The parliamentarian who had the objection is checking his source, so I said continue to make your amendment. So by all means, continue to make your amendment. Could you amend, could you read okay, my, my amendment is on page four of the conditions. Uh, there is fuel station full service, which is, is now uh, being proposed as a permitted use uh, with special permit. And I'm uh, proposing to change that special permit S to an N, meaning it would not be allowed in the um, in in this uh, zone. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion, Councilman Hudak. Yeah. Thank you, Councilman President. I have a question. What, what is the definition of a fuel station? Um, is it, uh, you know, uh, just gasoline? Does it include uh, electric uh, charging stations? Uh, that's, I don't know if the administration or any uh, solicitors have any uh, idea, but, I, uh, and I guess my point is, if you're tr you know, trying to prevent gasoline, traditional gasoline, I understand that. Okay, well, if you look uh, on the chart on page four, two above, uh, full fuel station full service is electrical vehicle charging station. The separate uh, separate entity. category. I'm not proposing changing that. Uh, I see. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. No. Uh, yes. 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 No. 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 Councilman Pavlaskis, no. no. make a motion to move the question. I have a motion to move the question. It's not on the debate. Second. I have a motion to second. The clerk, please take the roll. Yes. No. 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 Yes. 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 On the motion to approve. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. I, point of order. I would just request that on this final vote that we just give John Wayne a second to uh, come back and, and vote. Uh, I'm willing to go uh, uh, ask him to hurry up. I assume he's going to the bathroom. I don't want to go ask him to hurry up if you're going to vote without me, so. I haven't continued, sir. I'm going to give him a minute to come back. <laughs> Council Manning, while you are out, a motion was made to move the question. It passed. We are now voting on the motion to approve without debate. Yes. 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 No. 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 Yes. 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 Motion passes. Next on the dock, we go to the claims committee. Councilman Colford. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Uh, Appreciate the opportunity. I'd like to uh, report out the uh, several things that are pretty here in the room tonight. Uh, Therefore, we're doing pleasure. And I'll turn the floor back to you, Council President. Thank you. On the election of city officials, Board of Canvases, we have a Republican committee member determined to expire on March 6, 2023. Council Majority Leader Pavlovskis. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Council President. We have a letter here presented to us by the Cranston Republican City Committee, and the first name on the list is Randy Jagvoni, so I'll make a motion to approve Randy Jagvoni. I have a motion to approve Randy Jagvoni in a second. Any discussion? Seeing so, none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 On the audit committee, um, there was some question on the audit committee from the finance chair. If you want to let the people know, Council Vice President, thank you. Yes, the Council President, thank you. Yeah, I have, um, in researching this, and um, the finance director can weigh in on this, but um, these have to be submitted solely through the, um, the Finance Committee. Well, these appointments are done uh, not at, uh, by the full council, so both Mr. Pilati and Mr. Smith um, would have to go to the Finance Committee for approval from my reading. Mr. Strong? Director yeah. Strong? I, I agree with uh, Vice President Favicchio. I also um, wanted to point out, too, that we've already had an audit committee meeting, and with these two appointees, I have no objection to either of them. Uh, I know one in particular has done a good job uh, in my experience. And, but the point is that um, since we've already had a, uh, an audit committee meeting and there's been some presentation, I think it would be fine to appoint them, but it would be for after the, the end of this audit. That would be my recommendation. Well, we'll um, I'd like to put it on the finance agenda uh, for next week, and we can uh, discuss it there. All right. But also, I believe the that's on the 4th? That's the 4th. I yeah. So then we have additional meetings coming up after that. That's correct, and that's one of the, that was one of the reasons I wanted to try to get. And some I understand why you're doing, doing it because we're always having a problem with the quorum. Correct. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Well, to the chair, well, I'm the chair, so I'm going to be at the audit committee meetings to ensure we have a quorum uh, to help the finance chair out as the ex officio, knowing we have some vacancies. I do have concern with people coming on while we're doing the audit, even though Mr. Pilati had served, he had not been on for a little bit because it had expired. So, again, I have no issue with both of these candidates, but we should send them to the Finance Committee and their term would commence after we finish this, this audit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zoning Board of Review. I have an alternate reappointment, Josh Catone. Please. I have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second under discussion. Count both Councilman Vivek and Kapowskis. I'll cut for it. I just have a concern. I don't see a resume here. Do we have one? For um, Josh Gatton? He's, he's reappointed. He was appointed by the prior council, so we do have a few new members. Yeah, it was December of the prior council, so it might be worth. I'd, like, I'd love to see it if we could. Well, yeah, we could continue until next month until we get the resume. That's what we've been doing. It doesn't matter. Just to not have everyone downstairs. Yeah. So then a motion move to, move to continue the work. A motion to continue. I have a second on the discussion. Council Stegos. Are you asking to continue until she comes up with the resume or until next, until next month that way she doesn't have to go downstairs and buy the throw paperwork. It's, it's, it's not, it's not if you think you're going to quickly get it, but then we're not going to have time to analyze it and look at it, review it, and ask questions. I mean, I mean we, we continued the, uh, yeah, the historical cemetery when we continued last month, so I, I would make a recommendation if you would. Uh, yeah. I have a motion to continue in a second. You know, Councilman Lanny. The man uh, is already on the zoning board. All we're doing is reappointing him. He has a resume which was approved. Uh, and you won't delay this until the next council meeting uh, rather than take a five minute recess and go downstairs and get his resume and pass it around. Or uh, make nine copies. If there's only eight copies, I'd rather give everybody my copy. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why are we doing this? All of that is a democratic appointment. And I hate to see petty politics get involved with this type of stuff, but that's what it looks like to me. Is this a democratic appointment? I, I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm telling you he is, and you know he is. Well, I don't know. I don't know how the makeup of the board is. I don't have it in front of me. Councilman Cofield. Or is it a whole case? Thanks, Council President. Um, it, it appears that we have our next meeting the day before, so actually we could vote on this before uh, his term is ended. So I, I don't see that there's any harm if we do extend it to that. Just a thought. Yeah, I haven't seen how many of two weeks is not a giant term, but if we want to call it politics instead of doing our due diligence for our new members and giving them time to analyze and react, I have a motion to cut May. Five minutes recess, we'll get that resume up here in five minutes. Rather than wait two weeks or one month or whatever the case is. And it's not that in politics, it's common sense. Thank you, Council President. Councilman Plaskis. Through the chair to Maria, what the appointments on the Zoom board, are they for the full council or are they by what the candidacy has, Democratic appointments, Republican appointments? You know, the appointments to the zoning board, the five standing members, uh, they're appointed based on uh, geographic locations, their residency requirements. The alternates do not have any residency requirements and they serve for a term of one year. Okay, so it's not a party appointment, it's no. just put up. Yes. I, I just have a question that I just haven't seen the resume, and I don't remember seeing the resume last time I voted. I apologize. I thought Mr. Katon had been appointed by this council and was a reappointment, which is why I didn't send out the resume, but we do have one on file. Okay. Thank and you. I, you know, I can you know, okay. easily provide it. It's okay. my mission Thank if you. you want to see it. I have a motion to continue. I have a second. Clerk, please take the roll. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 The next one, I have Board of Contracts and Purchases. We have two resignations, Mr. Anthony Mantia and Richard Del Sesto. I thank you for your years of service. Yes, Director. I just want to thank both those gentlemen for working on the uh, Board of Contract and Purchasing. I do would ask, I, I am asking both the minority party and the majority party, because each person has represented each party, I, we need to have an appointment or someone to be appointed to the board because we're having a difficult time getting a quorum similar to what's happened in the order committee. So Mr. Lamantia was the majority, Mr. Del Sesto was the minority party. I would uh, appreciate if we could have, uh, uh, for the next meeting, have someone uh, be appointed by both parties. And uh, that will make our lives a lot easier when we have a, uh, discussions and a quorum for the Board of Contract and Purchase. Director Strong, we already have, the majority party already has an appointment we will have it for the next council meeting. I uh, look to the majority minority leader to come up with one from their side. I have a recommendation this evening, just if you would like to take it. Uh, submitted via the letter to the clerk, as is the proper channel. Okay, thank you. Thank you both. Report of city officers. Moving on to executive communications. We have before you the reappointment of Deputy Chief Tom Fredericks for one year. He's been on the necessary qualifications. I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. A second? Second. On the discussion, seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 The administration recommends the advice and consent uh, for the appointment of Rita Lavoie as a member of the Conservation Commission. Motion to approve. Second. A motion is second in discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Yes. Councilman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Speckles. Yes. Councilman Foley. Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Colfer. Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Uh, as part of these communications, you have the report on hiring special legal counsel consultants pursuant to the charter. That is in your packet for the evening. Uh, under Council President Communications, we have one more meeting until the year is over. Uh, we'll be right back in the 2018. I'd like to wish everyone, just in case you're not here or 
see this before Christmas or the new vote, the new uh, post for the December meetings on before Christmas. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Uh, spend time with your family and loved ones. That's what it's really all about. That'll be the extent of my council president communications. Council McCoy, according to the back, you have been promoted to council president, so you get to go first. Uh, thank you, sir. Very humbly. Uh, before we get started on the, um, on the uh, return of the cannons, I just wanted to quickly thank a few people after uh, my first year in office. Um, I wanted to thank the city clerk's office for their help. I wanted to just thank um, Director Muskie, Director Lopez. Um, you folks do a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make us look good, and I, I just want to let you know I appreciate it. Uh, Director Barone's not here, but he was also very helpful. And of course, my fellow councilman. Um, Regarding the return of the Cranston uh, Cannons, I grew up going to the park show, going to the matinees and whatnot, and we'd play on the cannons afterwards, you know, so it was, it was uh, very strong to my heart when we lost those, and through the due diligence of the administration, um, and especially council minority leader, uh, Al I just wanted to thank you folks for bringing that back to work, too. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman McCauley. Councilman Thank you, Council President. Um, I would like to read the resolution that I'm proposing to the General Assembly, because it has not been read in public, so I'm sure most people have no idea what it says. So if you allow me a minute or so, I'll read that and I'll be silent afterwards. You can read it. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot discuss it as it is not before us, but I could we have seen that, Council President. Thank you, as long as we all understand. Be resolved that whereas current state law allows concealed carry permit holders to carry firearms onto school grounds, and whereas the majority of states do not permit firearm on school grounds, and whereas a study by the Violence Policy Center of Washington, D.C. Gun Safety Organization found from May 2007 to February 2015 that in research involving 622 deaths in 544 concealed carry shootings in 36 states in the Dis District of Columbia, the vast majority of the killings were deemed non-self-defense, and only 16 cases were eventually ruled lawful self-defense. In realize, a two-year comprehensive final report of the Sandy Hook Advisory Commission, consisting of school administrators, teachers, law enforcement, psychiatrists, lawmakers, and legal professionals, date February 2015, made findings including safe school climate and safe school design and operation strategies. That specifically did not include the use of firearms or the arming of teachers or non-law enforcement civilians in schools. In realize the Rhode Island Association of School Committees, Executive Board have voted to support banning concealed weapons on school grounds except for duly authorized members of law enforcement, whereas the Rhode Island School Superintendents Association has adopted the School uh, Superintendents Association uh, position paper on school safety, a response to the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary, which specifically denounces efforts to bring more guns into our schools by teachers and administration administrators it reminds us that schools remain the safest place for children. And whereas the Rhode Island Association of School Principals Executive Board has voted to endorse and support the ban on concealed weapons on school grounds, except for authorized members of law enforcement holding us holding to its core belief that schools environments should be devoid of, of all conditions that may compromise the safety of students and staff. Whereas legislation has to ban 
uh, people except police officers from carrying concealed weapons in schools has been introduced by the United League of Cities and Towns. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Crimson City Council respectfully requests the Maryland General Assembly uh, introduce and pass legislation, legislative proposals that would prohibit non-law enforcement to carry concealed firearms onto school grounds. Be it fully resolved that the city clerk forward a certified copy of this resolution to the Crimson delegation of the Rhode General Assembly uh, seeking their consideration and support. Sponsored by myself and Councilman Livings, uh, Councilman Stikos. And my only further comment on that, Council President, is that I believe that this is the proper step. You can't carry a concealed weapon in just about any place, airplanes, federal buildings, or federal post offices, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you all know what they are. All I'm asking for is a vote. Vote it up or vote it down, but vote. Don't put your heads in the sea and say, we're going to bury this again in committee. Give it a vote. Have courage of your convictions. Let people know where you stand on something. They know where I stand, but nobody knows where you stand. Thank you. Yes, uh, I have one thing that uh, Councilman McCauley forgot, which was to ask about um, the, uh, do we have a, a list of, of people who are willing to snow shovel for seniors? Is that something that we still do, or did we abandon that, or? So, Councilman, as you may or may not be aware, that was a school project that was set up by the school administration to provide an opportunity for students to complete their community service requirements. Um, since that time, those requirements have been expanded to include other projects that students can do. So, at this time, I don't have any program like that that the school is uh, running. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, okay, and then I had uh, the two items on the uh, agenda, uh, administration report on um, <coughs> efforts to stop ATV damage uh, in the city conservation land on uh, Leighton Night Farm Road. Um, I met with I met with the West Bay Land Trust members um, a couple weeks back, Lisa came in, and we're just going to do a combination of efforts, having sort of both of us attack, for lack of a better word, that the city will be working with West Bay Land Trust. We will provide all the labor to put up new signs, better signage, reminding people that those don't belong here. Uh, West Bay Land Trust will be working with um, the local farms along there who may be using that not so much for the horses, but for the ATVs as well, reminding them that that is not for their use. We will continue with enforcement as best as we can. We've talked about where we can put um, barbs or something at the entrances to try to stop the ATVs, but we don't want to do it in such a way that would preclude healthy travel on those trails. So we'll continue to work with the land trust. They're good partners in this for us. Um, and as I said, the city's more willing to provide signage which I think is just a nice reminder, but we know people are going to avoid it, but at least it gives leverage for enforcement if we have signage up. And so we continue to work on it. Okay, that's, that's good. I'd just like other members of the council to know that uh, someone actually went up with a chainsaw and cut down trees on the trail so that there was enough room for the ATVs to uh, pass. So it's a, and I think it's, I mean, my, having been up there a lot, I would suspect that it's uh, some local residents who uh, yeah. live on late night road because they're hot riding up and down. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll continue to work with our police department on that. That's, you know, that land was, the, the point of that land was for serene enjoyment and, and protection of, of open space. So we certainly agree on, on that, Councilman. Okay, thank you. The other, um, the other issue is an issue that um, I know uh, a, a project uh, uh, Jeff Barone was working on with historical markers. A grant, we've got a grant from the Rhode Island Foundation, and I know uh, one was put up at uh, uh, the uh, Sprague Mansion, and I remember Jeff reporting that there were plans for more, and I, I just wondered where that, that was headed. Council President. Councilman Steiko, so <clears throat> what's going on with that project right now is uh, the additional signs are being manufactured. Um, however, they're not going to be dis uh, displayed until the spring for fear that the winter is just going to damage them. So that project is kind of like slowed down. They're going to take their time to make the signs. There's no rush because they're not going to get them out before the winter. But the project is still ongoing. Uh, Director Garsha from the Crimson Library is on that board, and we're going to be replacing uh, Jeff Brown's uh, role on that, either myself or one of my other staffers is going to take over and continue to work on that project. So I think, I think he did a really good job at did the committee. I think there was a committee that worked on the first one, and it thank you for the things done. Um, all right, so. Uh, yeah, if you could just maybe let us know in the spring. Uh, do, you, do you have any idea how many are and, and the locations of the ones that... I believe uh, there's a couple of signs going to Knightsville. Uh -huh. And beyond that, I'm not sure what the other signs are, but I mean, we'll have plenty of time to look into that and get back to you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Lyon, I'm sure you want to get to your other one. Um, now, I just got a follow up question on the ATVs on Lake Mid Road. Uh, what are the penalties? You say, I know you say law enforcement will look into it, but what are the penalties for uh, unlicensed, and they are unlicensed, vehicle operating on private property and destroying? There is an ordinance, there is an ordinance on about no off road vehicles. I don't know what the penalties for it. Yeah, because you know, it's not just there, but I, I see them in my neighborhood, and I think most people see them riding in their neighborhoods, and their kids are riding ATVs, you know, under the age of 16. Yes. Councilman, if I can address that. Uh, Councilman, uh, my understanding is that if, there are, if the ATVs are unlicensed, they can be seized by, by the authorities, by the police that respond, because by the very nature of them being unlicensed, they are they're operating illegally. As far as licensed uh, ATVs out there, you know, with proper registration and proper paperwork, uh, they can still be fined or written a ticket, uh, as you would with a, with a car vehicle, with a vehicle. And, and what type of, like a speeding ticket, what type of... I'll have to check with uh, what this specifically is, because uh, you know, I see it so often, and I'm seeing, especially with young kids. Yeah. I mean, uh, to me, we, we can look into that, Councilman, to give you a proper answer, okay? All right, I'll get a chance. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah. Hmm. There, there was an ordinance that was added several years ago uh, about ATVs. Yeah, but I can't remember what the fine is. Yeah, if there was a fine there. Yeah, there's a specific law for vehicles being able to be restricted. Yeah. So we can find out the details on that. And we still have a little bit of enforcement, particularly on that type of an open space yeah. property where they destroy, not only are they there and not really want to because of the noise or anything else, but actually destroying the lane. Any other council of communications? Captain Kaposkis. Thank you, Mr. Council President. As we approach the holidays, I just want to take a minute to invite everybody to the uh, third annual Knightsville Gazebo Christmas tree lighting, which will be Sunday, December 3rd, coming up. Starts at 4 o'clock. It's a great family event, and if you're all free, you're all welcome. Please come and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any further Council Member communications? Seeing none, I'll close that portion of the meeting. Um, introduction to new business. Oh, sorry. Director Lopez. Hi. Um, to follow up on
Councilman Kaplowskis' invitation, um, I'd like to invite the Council to be here on uh, Tuesday, December 5th at 6 p.m. for the traditional lighting of the City Hall tree and for the arrival of Santa. So please uh, hope to see you here and uh, hope to see the kids here. Thank you. Thank you, Director. What do you actually do business, Madam Clerk, if you could read the business? Proposed ordinance 11-1701 in the name of Title 10 of Code of the City of Princeton, 2005, entitled Motor Vehicles and Traffic, No Parking and Certain Streets Generally, for now gates of Boulevard at Hudson, Sefton, and Strathmore, to be referred to ordinance for hearing on December 7. Proposed ordinance 11-1702, authorizing the city to utilize Eastern Recreation Impact Fees for Dog Park at Beachmont Field, to be referred to finance for hearing on December 4. Proposed Ordinance 11-1703 in the name of Title 8.8 of the Code of the City of Cranston entitled Health and Safety Fire Prevention Code for Cooking Fires to be referred to Ordinance for hearing on December 7th. Proposed Ordinance 11-1704 in the name of Chapter 6.08 of the Code of the City of Cranston entitled Dogs and Other Animals Wild and Hybrid to be referred to the Ordinance Committee for hearing on December 7th. Proposed Ordinance 11-1705, authorizing the city to construct a dog park at Florida Avenue to be referred to Finance Committee for hearing on December 4th. Resolution urging the General Assembly to pass legislation banning bump stops and trigger cracks to be referred to ordinance for hearing on December 7th. Resolution urging the General Assembly to pass legislation banning guns in school to be referred to ordinance for hearing on December 7th. Resolution urging the mayor to provide public notice of sewer cleanout services provided by the earlier water to be referred to public works for hearing on December 7th. Following property damage claim, uh, claims to be referred to claims committee for hearing on December 4th. Property damage claim of Kristen Kasmini from the alleged incident on November 7, 2017. Following personal injury claims, Donikio Coronado from the alleged incident on October 10, 2017. Trinity Racine from the alleged incident on November 1, 2017. And that is all the new business I have. Contain a motion to send new business to committee. So moved. A motion and a second under discussion. Seeing none, please take the vote. Council Lady? Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. 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 Council 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 Yes. To date on roadway solicitation but, uh, litigation. Should we take a minute? You know, I was surprised you let that go, and I asked if you wanted to talk about your second matter, and you asked about ATVs, but. No, no, well, I got carried away. Ah, You want off road? You want off road. Councilman Laney, on the, um, on the legal uh, submission of bills, expenses for this month, if you go to page 5 or 10 on the uh, attorney DeSisto, there's an uh, amount paid for pain handling issue. I assume that's what you were referring to. It's 11800 round the rough right now. All right, and that's just for this month, am I correct? Well, uh, no, it actually... I was looking for the total. That's, uh, that's to date, I believe, because it says from the, they paid 921, so it wasn't for this month. I don't think there's been any other additional mm -hmm. bills. So that's the total amount spent? So far, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. If, if you like, I can keep you uh, posted if there's any additional bills next month. All right, I'd appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Yeah. There's no further comments coming the meeting? Right. Council President, just a yeah. point of information. Did you, did you want to clean up the the issue of the, the uh, Roger Williams Park.